What's up, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll show you how to install and use skins on Steam. For this video, I'll show you multiple examples, including the skin that I'll be using from here on out. If you've ever heard of skinning, you've probably heard of this Metro skin. That's quite popular. I've seen a lot of people using it and it's something you may want to go ahead and install if you like how it looks. But of course, since the skin was released, quite a bit's changed with Steam. And of course, the same goes for other skins as well. The installation process has changed somewhat and different skins will work, different skins won't work. It's really up to you playing with it, but you can in general improve the way that your Steam looks, whether it's minor or major. Why exactly am I on this website? Well, I simply Googled Steam skins and this website over here has a nice list of some skins and this site as well here. Though the second one, uses a tool that you can go ahead and download and do it that way. On top of this, I'll also be showing you the Dracula theme for Steam, which is probably what I'll be using as I do quite like the look of Dracula. And of course, it changes the color of these items here as well, rather than just Steam itself. Anyways, let's jump into it. I'll start with the arguably simplest way, which is using steamcustomizer.com. Heading across to the site and downloading their tool, download again, you'll be able to change the way that Steam looks. However, if I head across to the source code, you'll see that this was updated quite a long time ago to say the least, but the last update being two years ago. So things have changed and this doesn't work as good as it used to, but it still does roughly work. I'll go ahead and download the installer by clicking the download button on their website and then opening it up, clicking yes after being prompted for admin, then clicking through the installation steps, it'll create a desktop shortcut and it'll run. Now, for some reason, the shortcut doesn't have an icon on it. And if you go ahead and open it up, it shows you this here, no skins are installed. Go ahead and download one and then it crashes out. How do we go ahead and use it? Well, the Steam customizer site over here has a built-in editor. So you can go ahead and create your skins and you can explore different skins but you pick a theme color, or of course, just browse through skins in general. There's a whole bunch of different skins. Some of them you may like, some of them you may not, and some of them may have typos. Anyway, I'll download one of the featured ones. How about the Cyberpunk 2077 skin? Well, clicking it, you'll be taken across to a preview page and then click download again. You'll download a .st skin file, and upon opening it, clicking yes when prompted for admin, Steam will then close, and when it reopens, it should be skinned. You can already see it looks quite different, Though not this over here in the center. Why is that? Well, you need to run a different program or have a skin that supports skinning this centerpiece over here as Steam changed the way that they work. Now, of course, some items may be out of place, like this little icon over here showing messages. This family icon isn't often included in skins. You may see a back bar here if you're using it and things like that. It's not the most inclusive, but it does work. On top of this, you also have an arrow over here that leads to customized skins, browse skins and community group. So it's really a mixed bag of what you'll be getting from this. I personally don't like the fact that it's only the top bar, the bottom bar, and some of the other windows that have now been themed and skinned. So instead, I'd use something from elsewhere. But once you have it installed, you're able to open the Steam Customizer again. And this time, instead of an error, you'll get this over here showing you previews, and you can change between them by clicking Apply, or of course, Delete. Nice and simple. On top of this, if we head into Steam, followed by Settings, we can go to Interface and customize the skin here, change it to default or change it to other ones. Nice and simple. To install skins manually, you need to head across to where Steam is installed. If you have it open, open up Task Manager, locate Steam, right click and then open file location. After you've done so, scroll up to the top, sort by name and we'll be looking for the skins folder. If you don't have one, you can create one. Then simply download zips and extract them into here. Each folder includes a different skin, so folder name, followed by all of the skin files. That's the folder structure it needs to follow. So if we head across to the other link that I mentioned to download this Metro skin, usually you'll find different information on how to install it on their relative pages, such as this over here, basically saying extract it and choose it, then restart Steam. To uninstall, just delete it from your skins folder. So I'll download it here or from metroforsteam.com, their official website, which seems to give me a more up-to-date version. So maybe it's worthwhile checking out the official websites as well. Anyway, opening it up, you get a folder like this and a bunch of files inside of it. This folder is what we need to extract into the skins folder here. After we've done that and it's dropped all the files into our Steam skins folder, we need to go ahead and open up Steam settings, interface, and then choose the skin from here, Metro for Steam. Click OK, you'll be asked to restart Steam. And upon doing so, it should look different. There we go. You can see the top bar is nice and customized, although once again, this main menu over here hasn't really changed as it needs to be used differently. And there we go. 
looks quite nice actually. And of course on top of this, the settings window as well has also been changed. Though with skins you'll find it a common theme that certain items overlap and things aren't exactly where they're supposed to be because the skins aren't always the best when it comes to this kind of thing. Anyways, whether you like it or not, that's basically where we are currently. In order to customize the sidebar over here and get actual customization out of this screen, you need to go ahead and edit Steam files that are basically reset every time Steam updates. It runs somewhat similarly to Spice to Fire and Better Discord, etc. You need to keep it up to date whenever Steam updates. So for this example, I'll be showing you Dracula. Now Dracula is a nice theme that I like. It has nice colors, etc. And in order to install it, you simply download it, extract it to the skins folder, but you also have an extended installation that actually allows you to change how the main window over here looks. So heading across to Dracula, looking under basic installation, Windows, you'll find it download or clone this repository. Upon heading across there, you'll see all of the code here, nice and recently updated. Click the code button followed by download zip and I'll open up the zip here. As you can see, Steam Master and a bunch of skin files inside of it. What I'll do is head back to the skins directory and extract the folder as is. Then I'll rename it from Steam Master to say Dracula to find it a bit easier. And inside of it, you'll see some files. We'll get back here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and select it from the Steam menu. So Steam settings, interface, and select the skin here. Dracula, okay, restart. It looks slightly different. It's now got the nice pink highlights. And other than that, it's mostly the same as it was before. It hasn't changed too much other than a couple of colors, which is why I prefer this over other skins. Things aren't overlapping, things aren't nice. Then to actually customize this section here, that's what the extended installation is for. Heading back to the Steam directory, you'll notice a install.sh file. If you're on Linux, awesome, go ahead and run this file. However, if you're on Windows, steps are a bit different. This page over here talks about the extended installation, run the sh file on Linux. However, if you're on Windows, you need to move files yourself. But don't worry, there's a much easier way to do this. The reason that sh files are working on Linux is because it uses Git. Head across to this link in the description down below to download Git, click Windows, followed by download 64-bit for Windows if you haven't already got it automatically downloading, open up the installer, then follow through with the installation. It's a rather long installation, but I'll go ahead and turn off Explorer integration, which will make it show up in this right-click menu here as such, which may be annoying for some people. Make sure it is associated with .sh files. Next, of course, it's already installed, and then basically leave everything else as is clicking next all the way until the files actually start to explore here. Of course, if you have a previous version, it'll be uninstalled and then updated. And there we go. Other than this, there are no other special requirements. You should now see that install.sh has an icon next to it. And upon opening it, a window will open and then vanish. Now, I haven't restarted Steam another time, but if I head back to it, you'll see it's definitely skinned now. This bar here is nice and pink. Highlighting games is nice and pink. And of course, if you would like, you can probably customize it by editing the 5.css file over here, which includes Steam 5 and custom, so custom.css. Editing these files here, you'd probably want to change the accent color and I think another CSS file somewhere else in here as well. Not too short, but it's definitely in here and you're able to customize it further. With it looking like this, it's quite nice. Though eventually, this will no longer be activated and you'll have to go ahead and double click the install file once again. It's not exactly the best, but it does work pretty well. And I wouldn't be too worried if I lost the pink highlight over here. But if it's something you like, you do have to worry about going back to it and reactivating it. They do have a mention that you can disable the verify files option in the Steam shortcut by adding hyphen no verify files to basically every shortcut to Steam on your computer. However, I would think that this would stop it auto updating. Maybe not. Mm, in fact, it probably wouldn't. You'd still get the pop up as usual. But after updating, you would have to go back and run the sh file once again. So in order to do that, there's two places we need to do it at minimum. So if you have a shortcut on your desktop, right click properties on the Steam shortcut. If you have it in your start bar, you'll need to locate the shortcut for Steam, right click, more, open file location, and you'll be inside of your start menu shortcuts. Right click, properties, and then at the end of this over here, hit space, and then add hyphen no verify files as such, with a space between the Steam startup command and hyphen no verify files. Hit OK. And the next time that you start up Steam using the shortcut, it won't verify files, therefore keeping this pink skin on the side. 
Of course, updates should still happen properly when they do. On top of this, you need to do it for your desktop shortcut, for shortcuts you could have hiding anywhere else on your computer, and if it starts with Windows automatically, you'll need to add it there too. Opening up my task manager, heading across to startup, you'll see that Steam is listed here, although I currently have it disabled. What you need to do is locate where the shortcut file is, or disable it here and just run Steam manually in the feature from a shortcut that you've edited. Though, if you would like it to start with Windows, the easiest way to do it is to edit the actual pointer to it in your registry. To do so, hit start, type in REGEDIT, open registry editor, click yes when prompted for admin, and they'll be copying the piece of text from the description down below, selecting all the text at the top here, pasting it in and hitting enter. This will take us into HKEY current user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, run using the folders on the side here. Inside of here, you'll see Steam. Right click this, modify, and at the very end of this, add space hyphen no verify files, and then hit OK. Upon doing so, whenever it starts up with Windows, it'll start up with that argument and not verify files, meaning it won't replace that color that we've now changed on the side. Unfortunately, that isn't included in the automated install process, but hey, at least it's relatively easy to do. If you'd like to uninstall skins, simply delete them from the skins folder and change away from them in the settings here. If you'd like to uninstall that Steam customizer program, which is something I'll be doing, you'll need to use the normal uninstaller program screen, or of course the new one that comes with Windows. Looking for Steam, it's done here, the Steam customizer. After doing so, it's just a normal uninstall process, nice and easy, but anyways, that's about it. If you'd like to know how to switch quickly between Steam accounts and possibly change themes in an easier way in the future, there may be a way of doing that on my open source project, the Techno Account Switcher, which you'll find a link to down below. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.